Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. This is a closing market wrap for Tuesday, October 15th, 2019. Um, we skipped, I skipped last, uh, the uh, closing market wrap yesterday uh, because it was a Columbus Day holiday. The bond markets were closed. So what you get there is typically very low volume. Hard, and we didn't have really anything to report. Markets were almost flat yesterday, so there weren't any technical developments. Instead, of the end of the day, I just post an update for members on the um, uh, the natural gas uh, you gas uh, trade idea um, and uh, that's that's what I continue to focus on on the site you know, the trade ideas uh, you know and where I'm trading personally most of what I have right now is are things that are, are have nothing to do with the stock market you know the euro US dollar um, specialty drug and generic drugs that I mentioned today I did a video on those or the trade ideas in that sector cannabis stocks natural gas shipping stocks uh, since last week um, coffee, things like that, that again have very little, if anything, to do with the market. That's where you have, uh, in my opinion, uh, not only a much better risk reward profile than this equity market, but a much better gain potential. I mean, in just a couple of days, you made, you know, uh, five, six times what the market's done in the last week or so. Uh, so here's the bigger picture. Let's just start there. It's a weekly chart of SPY. Nothing's going to matter until we close the Friday. Now, nothing can change here on the weekly chart of SPY anyways at the end of this week, no matter what happens. SPY broke down. This is our primary bull market trend line off the 2009 lows. That broke down and back tested, uh, followed by the big swoon down in uh in January, or I'm sorry, not January, into into the December lows, but uh, October broke down, so a year ago, and we had that big meltdown there. Came in, we back tested the primary trend line, back tested again, rolled over, set up the secondary trend line off the uh, December 24th lows, broke down from that one, been back testing. So the story remains, it's you know the tech. Tech stocks have been holding up the market. Uh, SPY you know, has broken just about every trend line, but still holding the 200-day moving averages. And remember, the S&P 500 will go nowhere without the NASDAQ 100 because uh, it is the tech is still the largest component of the S&P, just like the, the Qs. So let's look at QQQ. That one we're a little bit uh, monitoring the weekly chart a little closer. We have the up trend lines off the December 24th lows. Uh, they were broken a couple weeks ago, ever so slightly, with that you know red candle. As I said, wasn't really a solid breakdown. The following week we had a nice move down, but reversed right where expected on the initial tag of the 40-week slash 200-day moving average uh, in that 182 support. So we bounced from there closed right on or a hair below the um, uptrend line, the December 24th line, closed right on it the following week. So far this week we're into it, but we're only two days into the trading week. So uh, should we build on the gains into Friday? We'll have recovered that trend line. That'll be near-term bullish, and that'll almost guarantee that pop to new highs. Like I'm talking about a marginal new high. Again, based on this chart, it doesn't look like it could be much. That's why I view it as a picking up nickels in front of a steamroller trade. There's just not a lot of upside. The upside potential does does not outweigh the uh, downside risk, um, in my opinion, at this point in time. XLK, uh, this is what it's all about. The tech sector, beautiful, nice, clean uptrend line off the lows on the just uh, off the December 26th or 24th low. Uh, there's your breakdown last week. And so far, we've been back testing that trend line from below. You can see each of these weekly candles. Uh, but like with QQQ, um, we have the potential. We rally from here to, to close above it, pop and make a marginal new high. And that's all it will be. Uh, assume, you know, Hold on, let me let me. Assuming it's only a marginal new high, that's all I suspect it would be. Uh, we'll still have the same divergences that were in place here at this high um, before the correction, uh, as well as this high. Uh, that's been the mo. This market just inching up marginal new highs uh, as the longer term momentum indicators roll over, and uh, so therefore, again, it's a matter of do we have another one, two, three, four percent upside before the next leg down or not. Hard to say. Maybe we'll have some more clarity at the end of this week. All right, daily chart. Uh, let's see what's. Let's see what I want to point out here on XLK. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on just XLK alone, but uh, there it is. You have this trend line now. 
which was being stretched right here downtrend line I think that's the July you know July about July 29th high right there and we came in came in and we popped above it today and we've also we're creeping above as I just showed you on the weekly chart on or above that uh, the trend line from the uh, December 24th lows so that's XLK but let's look how look at the indexes uh, on QQQ Remember last week we took out all the, the a lot of the near term, the most important levels being watched. Those were the top of the August trading ranges on both SPY and QQQ, as well as those near term downtrend lines. I'll get to those in the 60 minute chart in a second. They were all gapped impulsively above, which was near term bullish, and you know it set the stage for this you know follow through so far. Um, but what I'm looking at here on the QQQ is let's look at this board. This downtrend line right here comes off the recent highs. Uh, again, that high is either July, I think it's July 26 here on QQQ. Yeah, there it is, July 26. So we zoom in real tight. You can see that trend line. There it is, July 26 highs. Come in, capture this one. And uh, we have about three reactions so far right there. Uh, one, two, three, uh, right there. I won't call this a reaction yet because uh, we closed about right on it and we need to see where we go tomorrow. So if we are rejected, that'll give a reaction and then this is a, a trend line to watch. So far, like I said, we only have three. That's a minimum amount of validated trend line. So uh, if we pop on through it, it doesn't mean much. And I can tell you this, we're so close. Like I say, it's, it's often like a magnet. Two magnets getting close enough together, they tend to snap together or a black hole anything gets near it it gets sucked in light and everything and that's kind of like the market with new highs when you get that close normally not always you can see they didn't make it here but but that's been the mo for for years now or at least the last couple of years you eke out these marginal new highs or only a you know sometimes less than one percent sometimes two three percent above and it's again it's the posture of the indicators that say that will be the most likely case if the market can punch on up to a new high so um, again that's that's what we'll watch and see I just think there's better trading opportunities elsewhere until we get some solid sell signals and take out those 20 uh, 200 day moving averages for, especially on a weekly closing basis on QQQ and SPY uh, let's look at the 60 minute chart and there's those same trend lines off the highs on uh, July 26 right there you can draw it again you can take it to this trend line or these the candlesticks here extend it out here let me show you what I'm doing there uh, turn everything else off and uh, that's it right there there's your trend lines you can come in touch that high right there or you could pull it down and, and catch this one right here look a little bit different either way right on it or a little below it depending on how you want to look at it and then the other thing that stands out uh, is really this price channel last week I had this uh, trend line here and it's still a valid uptrend line in QQQ I know there's a lot going on on this chart let's do it like this let's make it clean here show you that trend line right there uh, how did I have it I had it like this I believe Here's your second part of that price channel right there. Let's come on off here. There you go. So there's our price channel. And as I mentioned in the video for members today, uh, and I say this a lot, anytime you, you come across a price channel, it's, it's pretty common to see the midpoint of that channel. Here we go. That's, that's the midpoint right there. This is the line. I'm, that's how I had it drawn before. And you see the midpoint of the channel you often get a uh, uh, a line that will then act as support and resistance. So what happens is, there we go, I'm trying to replicate how I had it drawn before. It's nice and clean in the middle there. Pull this one up, put it like that, make it more parallel to the to the current channel, and that's how that's how it was drawn. Perfect. Okay, there we go. And so you can see that we have uh, when you're in a price channel like this. Of course, the top and the bottom of the channel act as resistance and support, but usually you spend time either on the bottom half or the upper half, and the midpoint of the channel is resistance until and less taken out, like any resistance level. And then once you do, which example, for example, here you did on a gap, then you have the top of the channel as uh, resistance, and you trade in that cluster there. Then you gap down and then you were back in the bottom of the channel and you remain there until again a gap up. So you can see how well uh, the top and the bottom and the midpoint act as support and resistance. So what you want to look for here, and we've been trading now about as long 
is we've traded here on these other two periods on the top and 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 lower hemisphere of the uh, of that uh, price channel. So you know, break of that midpoint would most likely bring us down to the bottom of the channel. Whether whether it's right away or whether we trade around for a little bit, that is the uh, highest probability trade. Uh, so until then, like I say, support is support until unless taken out. So that's what we're watching. Yeah, I'll mention it. We have minor, very slight uh, divergence right here on the 60-minute chart. Remember, we had divergence last week. We had it at this point here, but it was burned through. Like I said, divergence is not a buy or sell signal, merely an indication of a trend reversal, and you need to see it confirmed. This divergence was never confirmed. By confirmed, I mean you need to see a bearish crossover on the PPO, and then that effectively, if we get it, we'll put in a lower high right there and uh, it'll do so as well in the RSI because RSI will follow suit so we'll we'll look for that and that that divergence could most certainly bring us to the bottom of the channel so that's just near-term stuff to watch and IWM let's talk on that real quick uh, we had uh, a pullback to test this downtrend line recently. You had a downtrend line here. Uh, we broke out, gapped above it, came in, back tested it uh, the other day, and we've moved higher. In fact, I posted that as a day trading op in the trading room yesterday, um, going long on that pullback there. Let me find my RTY chart. I've got it somewhere in here. Let's see, RT. There it is. All right, so this is the. Uh, trend line I posted in the trading room the other day. We had a breakout here uh, and then a back test. So that's where I posted as an objective long. I only took a bounce trade uh, and yesterday, I think six tenths of a percent. I just wanted a day trade out of it and then I re-entered it today and cycled back and I, as I said, I, I took profits there at that 15, 28 level again. Uh, that's, uh, you know, you have a divergent high right here on uh, RTY, the small cap futures at resistance and uh, so that may give us another pullback and we've already tested this trend line once. It really wouldn't be that good for the small caps if it runs back down to it. Um, but uh, obviously on the on the bullish side, to break out above that level and burn through those divergences, well, that would open the door for this next uh, resistance level here, about 1592. Again, my convictions aren't so high. I'm out of that trade um, right now and uh, just focusing on, like I said, other, other things besides the uh, equity markets because I don't see any compelling risk reward you know, tr especially swing trades, you know, day trade in and out, get in and out of stuff, but I don't see much there. Let's talk about the futures real quick. ND, uh, NQ, NASDAQ 100 futures. Here's those yellow uptrend lines that finally gave way last week. Breakdown back test, little pullback. We had, uh, um, actually, we, yeah, we had barely holding on to divergence right there at that point. And what we did is we pushed up today and we have extend that divergence line. You can see the divergence is, uh, now we have it on both the RSI, which we did not last week because RSI made a higher high right there. So we have divergence here, potential. Potential because we need to make a bearish crossover. So this, this is what you want to look for right now in the overnight session or into tomorrow. This is a, mm, a marginal trend line. It's not the best, but it's worth pointing out off that same low right there. And uh, and then you have the, uh, like I said, divergence right now. And, you know, if the market can't push up the new high soon, then this could be the catalyst to, to bring it down. Uh, so watch that trend line. Again, it's not the best defined trend line, so I'm not crazy about it. ES, similar story here. 60-minute chart of ES. Let me zoom in a little tighter for you. All right, so here's the S, and again, they, you know, S and P 500 took out the uh, tops of the uh, August trading ranges last week, and uh, took out these this downtrend line, which was a big one, and so all that was a catalyst for this this additional upside. Uh, and then we had a breakdown of the same trend line that we had on uh, NQ, and what we did is, is after that first leg down, we pushed up here today, and you can see made a marginal new high on the 60 minute which is still a divergent high or actually I shouldn't say still we did not have divergence at this high we made a higher high on the RSI and about an equal high just like uh, NQ on the on the PPO down here but now we do have potential divergence Let's get this PPO to cross over it will confirm that divergence and so we can put a comparable uptrend line uh, there let's let's draw it a little bit different let's draw it in like this tighten that up it fits a little bit better on NQ but there it is on ES so we'll, we'll see how that plays out
Okay, let's just wrap it up here. There's really, like I said, not not too much to point out. Uh, we have to wait till Friday to see how the weekly charts close. And again, they may not tell us anything. Like the last few weeks, we were uh, those candles were printed right around the trend line, so it didn't really give us any definitive you know clues uh, as to the near term direction. And, and right now, there's just not a whole lot that jumps out to me on these charts, other than you know we had those bullish breakouts last week. And as I showed you in the beginning of the video, QQQ is pushing a uh, potential downtrend line on, on SPY and ES. It's more of instead of a, a, a slight downtrend line, it's more of a equal highs. So let me just cover that and then we'll wrap it up. See, on, on this is the SPY 60 minute chart. And so the level to watch for SPY right now is uh, that blue line there. I should turn on the uh, levels for you about 302.50 or so. And as you can see, this goes back a couple months here. That seems to be uh, where SPY has capped. Each one of these was a divergent high. Marginal new, slight divergent high. Each was followed by a correction. This one was a little correction. Followed by, well, just a kickback rally. A lot like what we just had in the futures. Then the correction came. Uh, so let's watch that 302.50 level. If we get there, we have a comparable channel with a midpoint line here on, on SPY. And we also have the uh, potential but unconfirmed 60-minute divergence just like we did on the uh, futures as well. So those are the levels we'll watch for tomorrow. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.